Well, it is good to be here today. Um, for those of you who may be listening in, we're here at Abundant Life by the Sea in Isla Verde. If you ever happen to be in Puerto Rico, come visit us. My name is Pastor Corey Casterton, and I have a good word to share with you today. Now, in the year 2019, 14,400,000 people, something happened to them, and I hope it's never happened to you, and I hope it will never happen to you, but their identities were stolen. You know, and we live in a time and age, a lot of us growing up, we never heard of this thing, but with the technology in which we live in today, you know, there, there's a lot of people, if they get your social security, then they can get in, they can grab your, your info, uh, that type of thing. But you know, we say, well, that's sort of a modern thing, identity theft, but in reality, identity theft has been a lo around for a long, long time, because we know that the devil, the Bible says, has come to steal, kill and destroy I'm using the anchor again what i want to share with you today and it's the uh, the title of our message anchor into god and what he says about you anchor into god and what he says about you now in life we can anchor into a lot of different things we can anchor into what society says we are or what we should do you know we anchor into this or that but I want to say to you, the best place to anchor in, anchor in to God, and also anchor into his word, also anchor in to what he says about you, and that's what we are talking about today. Now, our emphasis today is beware of identity theft in the spiritual realm. We need to find out, you need to find out, I need to find out what God says about you we need to find that out, we need to believe it, and then we also need to speak it out, very much so. And um, the key verse today, a very well-known verse, you will know the truth and what? The truth will set you free. The truth will set you free, John 8, 32. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you can know the truth, and the truth can set you free. Truth is a powerful thing very powerful thing and so we're going to be speaking truth today out of God's word and we are in the middle of a series called making a good confession and you know the Bible says that a person will have joy by the answer of their mouth and I've used this illustration before but Hebrew scholars say that words are like arrows that have a tip to them and if I shoot out an arrow um, whether towards God or towards you or towards myself, and it's a life-giving word that I'm giving, guess what? When it hits you, your mind, your heart is going to have life to it. And it works the other way also. Now let's just say somebody, where is it in Psalm 14? There is no God, okay? They're spitting out those type of words, and those are not words of life. Those are actually words of death. And so uh, today we want to talk about the power of the words that we speak to ourselves. All right. And just reviewing, we've been saying that a good confession is a good part of possession. And uh, last week we spoke about Caleb and, and Joshua. Uh, Ten, twelve spies went into the promised land. Only two of them gave a good report. And there were hundreds of thousands of people who died in the desert because of the report, the bad report. And so, what I want to start with today is I want to mention three things that is true about everybody here today and is true of everybody on the face of the earth. And the first one there in your notes is this, that you are created in the image of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. In Psalm 8, it says, David says, he looks at the he, wow. He looks at he looks at the expanse of the of the skies and the stars, and he says, "It's, a, it's the work of your fingers. It, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you you visit him. You've made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor." Listen, when you look at creation, and you go, "Whoa, it's powerful!" But the pinnacle of God's creation was you. Mama. It says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Listen, horses are beautiful, uh, mangoes are nice, 
uh, whatever, eagles are nice, dolphins are nice. I don't believe in reincarnation, but if I did, I would come back as a dolphin, okay? But nevertheless, uh, I'll swim, I actually have some of them. But anyway, the point I'm making here is you are made in the image of God. Everybody, even the, the foulest, dirtiest person in the world, they are made in the image of God. And the second thing that is true of everybody here today, and everybody on the face of the earth, even the, the, Al, uh, the Al Qaeda in Afghanistan, God thinks good and precious thoughts about them. That's true of everybody on the face of the earth. And you say, well, how can God do that? Well, the scripture says that God's not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of truth. So God has good thoughts, good plans, for everybody. And the other thing here that is true of everybody who has ever lived and true of everybody here today, everybody true listening in, your sins have separated you from God. We know that Jesus paid the price so that we could be reconciled to God. And that those three points, those are truth. You may say, well, nah. well you can say, well, well, all you want. There are, there's been, I think it's I don't know, it's 500 or a million books that have been printed. And actually, there's so many books that have been printed, if you line them up uh, end to end, they would circle the globe. But there's only one book that God says, this is my book. There's only one book that says, this is the book of truth. And the truth is that you're special to God. And that God loves you. And although we have been separated from our sins, if we receive Christ, we can become new creatures. Now, that's true of everybody. Now, the next thing we're going to say now, it's not true of everybody. Well, every, some people say, well, everybody's a child of God. Not true. Everybody is a creature of God, created in the image of God, but not everybody is a child of God. And so, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 50 years ago, when Christ was knocking on the door of my heart, I received him into my life. That was my moment of being born again. But truthful things that God says only about Christians, these are things, if you're a Christian, that you need to say to yourself. Um, we need to be our own self-counselors. And what I mean by that, we need to get truth from God's Word, and we need to speak that truth to ourselves. And the first thing there, uh, I'm going to mention a number of them, is that you are, if, you're, if you've received Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a beloved child of God. It says, as many as received him, to those he gives the right to become children of God. So you can say to yourself, if you're a born-again child of God, you can say, I'm a child of God. I'm a beloved child of God. You know, okay, how many sometimes you feel bad about yourself, or all sorts of negative thoughts come to you, or you're, you're a loser, or this, or you messed up so bad, or all of that. You, you know, in moments like that, we need to get the truth into us and speak the truth to ourselves and say, God, I thank you. I'm a child of God. I'm a beloved child of God. Uh, 1 John 3, behold what manner of love the Father has given to you, to you, that you are a child of God. The young man we met yesterday, Adam, who's here to set up business on the island, uh, he's got, there's seven siblings. Is it five sisters and two brothers? No, no, I got Six siblings, I'm the seventh. Okay, good. But all together, there's five sisters and two brothers? Yeah. Yeah, and, and two of them are missionaries, one in Mexico and one in Haiti, uh, if I got that right. You know, and so God, uh, those parents, and pray for his dad, he's been sick, but those parents raised those children up well in the Lord. I'm not sure why I said that, but that's, a, that's an excellent thing. Okay, now if you're a child of God, another thing you can say about yourself, which makes me just I am forgiven how many of you just for one day of your life would like every thought and everything that you did put it up there on the big screen for everybody to read and see just for one day how about for your whole life oh but you know there's a tremendous verse in Psalm 103 oh talk about the dimensions of God's love it says as the father as a as a father, it says, as the heavens are above the earth, the heavens, so great is God's mercy towards those who fear. Now let's think about this for a minute. 
You know, to go to outer space is maybe 80 miles. But that's not what David's talking about. He says, as far as the heavens are, I think we all know if we were to get into Reuben's old Corvette and go a thousand miles an hour and we go into the universe, it would take us about uh, a million lifetimes to get to the next galaxy. You understand? It's a big universe. And so when David says, as far as the heavens are above the earth, so great is your mercy, your forgiveness. Oh! You know, sometimes when I blow it, sometimes I, 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 I love my wife. I've never hit her, okay? And I've never been unfaithful to her. But sometimes I, I say things that are either irritable or not nice, you know? And I, I feel bad because there's nobody else I love more than Carmen on the face of the earth other than Jesus, you know? Now, I love you all, but Carmen comes before you, okay? <laughs> all right. But, uh, but anyway, you know, I, you know, she forgives me, but I said, God, I feel so bad to just... You know, and, and I look up and I said, oh, thank God for your infinite mercy. So if you have blown it really, really, really bad, I want you to know that God is really, really big on mercy. And the next verse in Psalm 103 says this. It says, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins from us. Now, I used to think, well, I go east and I go west. I go around the globe. They're going to meet up again. No. Uh -huh. Think of yourself on the earth and then think of space. And you go far east, you know, millions of light years that way. And then you go millions of light years that way. And that's how far God separates our sins from us. That's something to really uh, be joyful about. So if you have blown it in the past and you have confessed it, tell you what, say to yourself, I am forgiven. I am, say it now. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Oh, and that's one of the reasons. Just to, to, you know, just to worship God. We worship you. You're up. The Lord, Psalm 145, verse 8. The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and great in mercy. Woo! And if God's like that, then we should try to be like that, too. All right. Let's move on. All right. You know ready for another one? Yes. All right. Ha, ha. This is a wonderful one. How many of you sometimes blow it and you feel that like God either hates you or doesn't love you anymore or you just, you know, you, anybody else once in a while? Yeah. You know, yeah. the scripture says this, that not, nothing will separate you from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor powers, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate you from the love of God. So even if you're feeling uh, yucky or wetter, even in the midst of your yuckiness, guess what? God loves you. God embraces you. Oh. Now, you know, if you've been behaving bad and all that, you know, God's love will say, come on, let's talk about this. Let's, uh, you know, uh, let's work through this. But uh, God loves you. God loves you. And see, like sometimes I just say to myself, nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. Nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. Nothing's going to separate me from the love of God. Even when the enemy may be shooting arrows of accusation and condemnation at me. You see, when we speak God's word to ourselves, it is good therapy. There's something in psychiatric counseling uh, circles called, co called cognitive therapy. That means they, they work with you to apply certain truths to your life to help you get back on track. I tell you what, if the scripture is not cognitive therapy, what is it? You know, this is we renew our lives, we renew our minds with God's words. The best, and I think some of you know it. I've said it before, but I'm in counseling. I'm, a, I'm in counseling every day. Every day I get with God at the beginning of the day. I says, here I am. And the Bible says he is a wonderful counselor. Amen. You know, he's compassionate. He's truthful. Uh, he just, so, so every day I get with my counselor. And the Bible also says that your words are my counselors. So I open up the word of God every day to get counseling. You know, so I've been in counseling now for about 50 years. I think I'm still going to need some more. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. Good. All right. All right. So if you're in Christ, something you can say to yourself, 
If anyone is in Christ, he is a new what? Creature. New creature. If you're a Christian, say it. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. Creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man or woman. Old things have passed away. I've been born again. So, you know, when you're feeling like uh, like sometimes if you're really saved or you're or this or that, just say to yourself, I'm a new creation. Yeah, and somebody said it earlier, I forgot who it was, maybe it was Carlos or somebody, but when you're born again, maybe it was in the song, you know, the Spirit of God comes to indwell us, and actually that's another one here. Um, tell you what, sometimes we do stuff and we feel dirty, whether our thoughts, our words, our actions. And the Bible says this, that on the cross, Jesus took all of your dirt. Jesus took all of your dirtiness on the cross. He took it all. Everything you've ever done, everything you ever will. He took your filth, your, 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 your ugliness, my ugliness. He took it all on the cross. And that's wonderful news. But even more wonderful is then he takes his robe of righteousness and he clothes us with his righteousness. I mean, I'm 50 years old in the Lord. I'm still wrapping my brain around that one. But I can say, as it says in the scripture, uh, I am clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Let's say it. I am clothed with the righteousness of Christ. I am clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Of Christ. You see, it's, it's not just enough to know these things up here. But when we verbalize them and we put them into our atmosphere, we speak them to ourselves, it changes us. It does something on the inside of us. All right, just um, a few more. All right? Number six. God will make all things work together for my good. Romans 8, 28. God will make all things work together for my good. Even the roosters growing, even the traffic, somehow God uses everything. And so sometimes you're in a situation where you know, it isn't going the way you wanted to get going. But God says, hang in there, hang in there. I know somebody here who was in a situation uh, for months and it wasn't easy, but this person just hung in there, hung in there with God. And the Lord used that to change that person, but also the Lord used that to change the environment in which the person was in. So although we don't understand it, it's a matter of simply saying, God, I don't understand all this, but I'm trusting that you're going to use all of this, Lord, for my good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. All right. Here's a, okay, three more. This is wonderful. <laughs> you know, I've never, well, let's see, I have been with a governor before. I've been with two governors. Um, but, you know, to be with a governor or a senator uh, or, you know, uh, the president or whatever, it's a big deal to get an appointment. It's a big deal to be able to get into their office, that type of thing. Listen to this. As a Christian, you have 24-7 access to the presence of God. Oh, man. Woo! Somebody's cutting you off in traffic. You know, and part of you wants to cuss them right out. Or you can say, God, help me now. You know, you know, whatever it might be that you're going through. But we have 24-7. Or let's just say you're, you're, you're minding your own business and you're just looking at news and then something crops up there which is unclean on the screen. You know, at that moment, you have access to the throne of grace. And you say, God... Um, help me now and you just you switch out of there you know that type of thing I shared this with somebody I know this is personal um, but uh, I had a good swim the other day um, getting ready for my, the, the other swim and so I'm, I, normally I go right back to the car but Lord said sit on the, 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 the thing there for a while so I was just sitting there on the cement uh, slab now listen, I'm a happily married man, and Carmen satisfies me. I am, I'm a happily married man, okay? But out of the corner of my eye, there's a lady, long, uh, long, I see it, just out of the corner of my eye, 
tall, young, blonde hair, walking her dog. You know, now that's fine. You're a pretty woman, God, but you know the male mind somewhere, and the male eyes like to just. You, you understand what I'm saying? So I, I just said to God, I said, God, Lord, Lord, bless this woman, uh, bless her family, bless her friends. I just speak blessing. I just, I just kept looking at the ocean, and you never guess what happened next. She walks right in front of me. <laughs> I said, come on. You know, I mean, really, like from here to I mean, 10 feet away, walking the dog. I go, okay, God, put my head down. Lord, I, God, uh, bless Carmen. Bless, bless the ladies in the church. You understand? We have 24-7 access, wherever you may find yourself. And so then to put the ribbon on the thing, then I go to my car, I'm sitting there, and guess who walks in front of my car? I can't yeah, I go, unbelievable, you know? And I just, I just, you know? And the, the carnal man would just, you understand, the carnal man, the carnal woman, you know? But in that moment, you know, I was able to stay in the spirit and not go into the flesh because why? You and I, as God's people, have 24-7 access to the presence of God. Maybe sometimes you're with somebody and you just feel like blowing your coop and just getting so angry and mad and all that. And moments like that, underneath your breath, God help me. God help me. You know, we, we have 24-7 access. This is all. Say it out loud. I have 24-7 access to the throne of grace. Woo! Mercy and grace in time of need. Yea, God. All right. Praise the Lord. All right, two more. This is a powerful, powerful truth. Remember, truth sets you free. This one says, I am a temple of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, Paul is speaking to Christians, and he's talking to them every realm of life, but he's also talking about the moral area of life. He says, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit whom you have from God, you are not your own. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, this is a very liberating truth right here, you know, because the scripture says we are walking temples. What does that mean? You walk out of here, you're a walking temple. If you're a Christian, God lives inside you. You know, you carry God, you carry the presence of God with you. But I've shared this before, but there's lots of addictions that I used to have that I am totally free from those addictions. Why? Because that truth got a hold of me, that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. How could I smoke this or drink this or look at that and bring that uh, impurity into the temple? I doubt if there's anybody here who would go into a, for example, into a, a church building and light up a cigarette. You wouldn't do it, and you wouldn't uh, do other things in that, in, that, in that church building. Well, listen, you are more of a temple of God than a church building, because mm -hmm. it's just a church building. It's just concrete or wood, whatever it is, but we are living temples of God, so this is powerful truth. And you know what also it does when you say, I'm a temple of God? Talk about raising your self-esteem. <laughs> wow. Yep. I feel like singing again, but I, I know I can't sing really well, so I'll leave it there. I am a temple of God. All right. <laughs> I was drinking this morning. I was. And I tried to drink every morning. I tried to drink every, throughout the day, I tried to drink, you know. I tell you what, I've, I've done the alcohol route. I know that route. Okay, and I and I, it's been 20 or no, not 20, it's been since my 20s since I've drunk. And you know what? I do not regret one second of not having drunk all those years. I do not regret it, you know. And I know there's different opinions, and I, I don't want to get into that. You know, should you drink, should you not drink, and all of that. But I just I found a better drink, I found the Holy Spirit, I found the new wine. Yeah. I, 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 I. Yeah. Woo! All right, last one, and this is a really good one. Let's say it together. God is with me. God is for me. Let's say it a couple more times. God is with me. God is for me. God is with me. God is for me.
God is with me, God is for me. You know, sometimes when it feels like all hell is breaking loose and, and nothing's working and you don't know what's going to happen, this is powerful therapy. You say to yourself, God is with me. God is for me. God is with me. God is for me. God is with me. God is for me. And you see, this is one of those truths that falls in line with, with uh, Philippians chapter 4. And it says, finally, brethren, the things that are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, praiseworthy, good report. Think on these things. So you and I, we are living in enemy territory. We are bombarded with negativity. And this is one of the, the things when, when, you, when you get the negative starts bombarding you, George. Here's a good thing to say. God is with me. God is for me. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is with you. God is for you. God is with you. God is for you. Okay, John, when things aren't going well, you don't know what's going to happen. You can say, God is with me. God is for me. Erica, okay, Amy, not just George, every one of us. God is with me. God is for me. And listen, when, and, and the scripture says this. It says, bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Yes. So when there's negativity and, and negative thoughts coming at your way, you have a choice. And I said this to somebody before. Um, Adam, you're a young guy. Come on up here. You've seen this illustration before. <laughs> okay. Birdie comes along. Birdie. This birdie comes along, and it's a thought that says, God really doesn't care about you. You know, uh, uh. now you, listen, you have a choice. Look at me, come on. You have a choice whether you're going to let that thought come in and touch your heart and touch your life and do this to you, or you're going to say, no, no, that's not a worthy thought. Get out of here. You understand? We have responsibility for taking care of our thoughts. Now, let's just say another thought comes along and say, you are really precious to God. God is with you. God is for you. God has a good plan for your life. Are you going to let that bird build a nest? Yeah. There you go. Okay, good. Give my hand. Yeah. Right. Keep it in. You know, sometimes I can't do this, but sometimes I wish as a pastor I could climb into people's bodies. I could climb into their minds, and, and I could think for them. You know, I, I can't do that. I wish I could climb into them and speak for them. I wish I could do that. I can't do that, but I can give you this is liberating truth. And these things right here, we'll get them in our mind, and we'll get them in our hearts. And please understand, I'm not talking about a mindless, um, uh, a mindless um, religious type of, of, of uh, profession or confession. It says, I am a beloved child of God. I'm a beloved child of God. I, mean, I say it ten times. Like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you say it with your heart. You say it with your mind. You say it in faith. Let, and just, okay, you repeat after me now. I am a beloved, and say it with conviction. I am a beloved child of God. I am a beloved child of God. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. Nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. I am a new creature. I am a new creature. I am clothed with Christ's righteousness. I am clothed with Christ's righteousness. God will make all things work together for my good. God will make all things work together for my good. I have 24-7 access to the presence of God. I have 24-7 access to the throne of God. I am a temple of God. I am a temple of God. God is with me. God is with me. God is for me. God is for me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So you've been shooting some good arrows, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me wrap up by uh, saying this. Every one of us, every day. <laughs> sleeping, maybe that woke you up. Every day, every person here has self-talk. Our thoughts are thinking, and we talk to ourselves. And with our self-talk, we can either sink ourselves, or we can anchor into God, and we can be strong. We can be mighty, but it's up to us. It really is. So I just want to encourage you to watch your self-talk. And uh, we haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to ask Carlos and Yvette. I'm going to ask Symphony to come up here. I want some prayer time because some people here need some prayer. John, if you're available, you can be a prayer. -er. 
you know, but I just want, I, I want some people to come up and be prayed for. And those of you who are listening in, thank you for listening in. And we speak, we just speak life over you. We speak victory over you. God loves you. God cares for you. And so do we. If you're ever in Puerto Rico, come visit us.